Hey friends, welcome to this brand new episode. Today we're talking about five things every woman should know about counting macros. If you are new here, welcome to the show. This is the show where I give you all the tea about weight loss, macros, mindset, faith, food, and fitness. So if you're a woman, you're a busy mom, you're a busy entrepreneur, you're a busy kingdom woman, girl, you are welcome in this place. There is a seat for you here at my virtual table. All you need is a good set of headphones and some coffee, a notepad, and a pen, because today's episode is going to be one for you if you are struggling to lose weight, especially especially counting macros or if you've never heard about macros at all. And with that, let's get straight into today's episode. Hey friend, welcome to Lose Weight with Macros, the basics podcast show with me, your host Verona. If you're somebody who's overwhelmed by all of the conflicting information out there, you're confused about how much protein you should be eating, how to count macros, you don't have time to figure out your macros and you're sick and tired of repeating the same old boring meals because it is exhausting, you are in the right place. This Lose Weight with Macros basics podcast is specifically for you. You're the woman who wants to learn how to track your macros and do it sustainably do it in a way that you can enjoy your food and you don't have to cut out your favorite foods and we're not here for that so my friends if this is you grab your tea grab your coffee grab your water grab your matcha your notepad and pen because today's episode is going to be a juicy one so buckle up friends let's get it Now, when it comes to finding a diet, I know that it can be tough to find a diet that works and specifically works for you and your body. Now, I know as a woman, we're constantly being told to count calories, spend hours on Instagram or other social media, scrolling through hashtag fitspo posts. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, good. Don't go down that rabbit hole where you're searching for before and after photos. But you know what? I get it because some of us are visual. I'm a visual learner and I prefer to learn visually. Now, most of you might be kinesthetic or you might be auditory learners where you like to listen to podcasts or you can do the two or you can have a mixed blend of learning styles. Now, whatever learning style that you are, I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet, but I'm going to pack this episode with many things, which is why I encourage you to grab a notepad because it is juicy. It gets juicy up in here. Now, if you're somebody who has joined Focus on the Fat Loss before or coaching with me, you know that we go in because I'm the type of coach that wants to help you become your own coach, especially when it comes to macros. Now, when it comes to losing weight, I get it. It's hard. It is so hard to be inspired by the quote unquote ideal body type when, put it this way, some of them are photoshopped and you're like, oh my gosh, girl, you're airbrushed. Look, look, the one fire is bigger than the other. No, no, no. This is photoshopped fake lies gas this is not it and sometimes we can have that attitude and actually the pictures have not been photoshopped at all but either way no matter what part of the scale that you fall on I'm here to tell you there is good news and there is a better way than doing that now not all of you are into Facebook not all of you are into some of you can't stand Facebook some of you are like what are you telling me about Facebook for wherever you are at or meta book but actually it still comes up as Facebook so that's what I'm calling it for now. It will change. It may change to metadata or whatever the name is called right now. Now, if you are somebody who is over on the podcast, you're in the podcast or you're in the podcast group, or you go to follow the podcast page. Now, there's loads of ways that you can connect with us. And one of those ways is to go to Facebook, facebook.com forward slash VA nutrition coaching. Now, when you go there, this will be the page for the business. And now at the time, it was called VA nutrition coaching, the podcast. So I've since upgraded and I've since changed to go with the message that blesses the women that I teach and I coach the most to focus specifically on macros. And the reason why I wanted to focus on macros is because this is one of the ways that can benefit you when it comes to losing weight. So the clients that have coached with me, we have used the principle of macro tracking and they have found that they're able to eat pizza. They're able to enjoy their foods. If you don't eat pizza and you drink wine, you like cheese, they've found ways to still stay on top of their weight loss, still enjoy their favorite foods, including a glass of wine every now and then, and still lose weight without having having to restrict these things like they have done in the past. Sometimes it may feel like it. Sometimes it may feel hard work. Sometimes it might not feel like you're doing anything right or you're not getting any progress. But one of the ways that you can do this without completely overhauling your diet is to focus on tracking your calories. And when you first start tracking macros, when I go through your macros for you, so in the November round, what will happen is you will go to the website, you will sign up and you will then, once you've signed up, once you've paid and you secured your spot, what will happen is you get taken to another page where you complete an application or a form. Now a form, don't get daunted, don't get scared, an application or a form which will help me give you the correct macros numbers. And if you're somebody who's new here and you're just joining and you haven't really listened to it, I encourage you to go to listen to episode 138 
fat loss Q&A. Should you track your macros to lose weight, the group coaching program? Now, if you had listened to this back in August when I released this and you were on the fence about joining the September round, November round is coming and it's coming in thick and fast. And I want you to be there because if you're a woman who has doubts about whether or not you should die out on Thanksgiving or whether or not you should die out on Christmas Day, I'm going to give the short answer. The short answer is no, you should not do any of those things. But you're also worried about how you are actually going to lose weight or maintain the weight loss that you've started to get. Those results, that's what I'm teaching you through in Focus on the Fat Loss. I do want to tell you that you do not need to track your macros on Christmas Day. I cannot think of anything worse. So when it goes to tracking your macros or tracking your calories, calories are a form of energy. Now, basically each food has an amount of energy and I won't go in too much to the science here but it ha- each food has an amount of energy with them so that's why the term you might hear a lot of coaches or a lot of people refer to food as fuel for your body literally like a car and you know they make your body go that's what happens and most of the time the number one source that we get that energy from is carbohydrates now that's why many people start to say carbs are the devil carbs are the enemy they are not we this this method or this mindset of calling the devil food the devil the devil is the devil himself okay that's it we don't need to give any more glory to him and in fact we don't give any glory to him that's it he doesn't need no more airtime on this podcast he is what he is that is it full stop period point blank no more discussion about it carbohydrates is not the problem when we start to overeat and we're eating to make ourselves happy we're eating to numb the pain we're eating to forget about all the the last breakup the grief the stress at work that's the problem that needs to be dealt with when we're constantly apportioning blame to things that are inhumane or innate and they have no emotion that's the issue that something is wrong. How can we feel so confident to blame something else when deep down we actually know that the real problem, the internal issue isn't that, isn't the scales, isn't carbohydrates, carbs that make us fat isolated on their own. The actual issue is how we treat food, how we one, treat our body and two, how we treat our food and three, the relationship that we have with those two things, the relationship we have with our bodies, the relationship that we have with food. And those things can all absolutely be worked on. But one of my things as a coach is to really call out that nonsense because what happens is we begin to believe a lie. Some of you listening know that you are believing a lie. I used to live literally tell myself no 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 carbs make you fat and the more that somebody continues to tell you a lie eventually you will start to convince yourself even when you know it's a lie you will start to convince yourself that it is true and you start to believe the lie so you start to think okay if I just cut out carbs if I just cut out sugar I'll start to lose weight however then you find for a few weeks you start to lose weight or you start to reduce calories etc then you start to lose weight so you're like oh I was right I was right see I told you I told you until you stop losing weight then what then carbs is not the problem. Then you go back to carbs because you start to overeat throughout an emotional sense. That's what your body is used to. That's what the neuropaths in your brain are used to. They trigger that endorphin rush. Whenever you have a traumatic experience, whenever you have a sad feeling or stress, those hormones, they activate it and they go wild in your brain. And then you default back to old habits. Again, my friends, it is not you that's the problem. It is these beliefs that we have. And so as your coach, that's what we're tackling in these episodes. We tackle it in the one-to-one coaching. We to really dismantled those false beliefs that keep you stuck and they kept me stuck. So when you're focusing on tracking your calories, what you're focusing on is how many calories or how many units of energy does your body need to function to keep you alive? There are calculators that are out there that can go and do that, but they don't. They only give you a certain amount of numbers. Absolutely. If you're somebody who just wants your numbers and you want to do it for free, go ahead, go to the calculator sites and get the information. You might have a disparaging result from between one website and another because they all use different formulas. However, if you're somebody who wants the accurate thing to you or I'm taking into consideration things about your sleep, things about your stress, what things cause you stress, your your how your health is, how long you've been in a diet, all of those things don't get taken into account in a calculator, which is what distinguishes a customized approach when it comes to macros. VA nutrition coaching.co.uk forward slash custom macros. But if you want the full shebang, if you want the whole course meal, the free course meal, VA nutrition coaching coding.co.uk forward slash coaching is where you can book your session with me. You are going to put some skin in the game. It is not it is not, not 199. So you need to think about whether or not this is something that you want to do. And you can find out the information all on the website and to know whether or not this is the right time for you and the right and I'm the right fit for you. The next thing is to, to remember is you're looking at the big picture. Now, the first thing for you to understand about counting macros is it's not just about calories. Now, we'll go over this and over this and over this in the program because one of the things that tend to 
happen is we get bogged down in calories, 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 calories in, calories out, whatever. You might go to TikTok as a big adult and then go look for free what other coaches are saying in a 15 second clip, in a 30 second clip or one of my 30 second clips. There's only so much that you can say in each of those clips. But if you're somebody who wants a personalized approach, you're going to have to do different things in order to get that personalized approach for yourself. Now, I'm not saying that you can't listen to these coaches. I'm not the only person who has all of this information in the world. Of course not. But if you're here and you come in every single week, you download every single episode, I love that the fact that you are here and you trust me enough to be able to speak into your life, whether it's through faith or whether it's through food or fitness episodes. Now, if you are somebody who has no clue about nutrition, has no clue about macros, and you want to test the waters, as it were, before you sign up for coaching with me, vanutritioncoaching.co.uk forward slash macros guide is my five minute guide to macros for free. If this is too long for you to listen to, go and download that. Download it to your phone. It downloads instantly. You'll be able to understand macros in five minutes in in the PDF. So when you're looking at the big picture, there are so many things that you are doing. One of those things is focusing and understanding that it's not just about calories. Now, one of the, the key things to focus on and to understand is you have to look at your diet as a whole. Now, I'm not talking about diet in terms of restricting yourself from food. I'm talking about how your body is getting in nutrients, where your nutrient is coming from. Are you somebody who eats a lot of carby food, like starchy foods? And it's natural for you to, if you do realize that, it's natural to say, okay, I need to cut out carbs. It makes sense, but you don't need to do that. There are other ways to do so. So once you are doing this, you're working with me one-to-one. That's exactly what we're doing. I'm taking your, the way that you eat, the way that you live, the sleep, and how you do your lifestyle activities, how that will impact and affect your ability to be consistent in tracking your macros. And where you have sticky points over in the group coaching and in the one-to-one, we will work through those. So my passion is not to just give you the answer because I'm not a genie. I'm not a lamp where you rub me three times this side or that side and then I'm like what is your wish your wish is my command it doesn't work like that now sometimes people do expect that personal trainers or coaches are going to just be able to just tell me what to do tell me what to eat and I'll do it I'm not that coach and if you are looking for a coach that does that for you you would probably be better off searching the library about macros coaches or weightless coaches or over on social media to see which coach fits you for the need that you have but if you are the woman that actually wants to one day either go on and coach other women just like I am and you want to be able to share your story you want to be able to tell your challenges but you want to be able to be a role model for your children if you have them that you do not want them to follow in the same restrictive diet mentalities and the self-sabotaging thoughts that you did then this is why I coach I've been coaching for 15 years coaching troubled young people their families as well children always feeling that they were less than always being the outcast and they continue to play up to that behavior they continue to play up to that persona that was put on them likewise if you're a woman who's struggling with nutrition you're always trying to strive to meet your KPIs to meet your performances to be the best coach that you can be for your clients or be the best wife or be the best mother. You're getting imposter syndrome by just showing up or just by looking in the mirror. And that's constantly happening in your life day to day. Let me in and let me help you. Let me do what I can do in terms of nutrition to help you live the life of confidence that you were created to do. Now, I know sometimes that some of you are listening to where's the rest of the, where's the rest of the tips. They will come. If you're just here for the tips, you will get those tips. But if you're here to understand, to look at the bigger picture, these are the things that you need to take into consideration remembering that it is not just about calories that's why I talk I coach that's why I'm passionate and I show up here weekly there are times I don't want to get behind the mic because I'm tired hello hormonal month every single month so I'm not married so I'm not having children so my body is just you know doing its thing and you know the PMS and the struggles and the hormones are all over the place and the same if you're in the menopausal stage whatever stage of life that you're in We all go through these rough high times, low times, but I am here. I see that this platform is a way and a place. It's almost like a beacon or a house. Have you ever seen a lighthouse? You know those lighthouses that are on the sea or on the the form of the island and they're just just, lighting up that part of the island? This is how I see this podcast. For whatever duration that that God is going to have me here doing and delivering this podcast for, this helps you. Even if one woman downloaded this podcast, I would be doing what God has called me to do. So when you're looking at your macros, you are focusing on the bigger picture that it isn't just about calories. Yes, these things are amazing. Yes, these things are needed to help you lose weight. But one of the things that I drive home to equip you and teach you to understand is that point that it's about how you see yourself and 
I was there too. I remember hating looking at my body. I literally used to cuss my body all of the time. And I got ridiculed in a job where somebody like, it took me back to school when I was bullied. And it was a work colleague who was supposed to be a work colleague who was supposed to be pleasant to me. But she ripped me to shreds. She literally said that I looked like Big Mama's house. Martin Lawrence, who was on Big Mama's house, she literally cackled with laughter and said, you look like you got on a fat suit with pride, with her chest. And the funny thing is, we were about the same size. In fact, she was a little bit heavier than I was, but I was so insecure, so sad, didn't have no confidence that I just stood there in amongst her and all the other colleagues being laughed at like I did, well, like I was at school. And I was like, <laughs> it wasn't funny. There was another colleague that pulled me aside to it and he didn't like it. He didn't like what she did. He didn't agree that he, she made a spectacle of me and she's supposed to be my colleague. And she put, continued to, you know, I don't know if it's ever happened to you, if you've been bullied before. <sighs> It's not, it's not nice. It isn't nice. And I remember there were times where, you know, those kind of bullies, you might see them in films. And apologies if this is triggering anything in anyone. You know, when you are in a crowd and people want to bully and they start pushing you from one person to one person, that's happened to me. And it's rough growing up. It's rough growing up now. It's And you've got people that end up having... Yeah, I, I, I contemplated taking my life because of being bullied, because of not being loved and, and being rejected. But the only thing I've shared my story many times, the only thing that I found solace in was food. But that wasn't helping. All it was doing was making my health, affecting my health and making me insecure even more because I didn't like seeing the way that I looked. So when we focus on fat loss, one, we are focusing on the fat loss and how you can do that nutritionally. And two, we're focusing on the fat loss and your mindset and how to maintain it. So over in the coaching program, it's a 20 week program, 20 weeks. You get to meet with me and we have this, we're going in deep, we're digging in deep to those things so that you can really get long lasting confidence. We're literally rebuilding your whole mind, your whole relationship with food, but I, but you've got to come with me. I can't do all of the work for you. You have to come with me. So we're looking at all of those things when it comes to the bigger picture. Now, the next point is we talk about this often is to think about the goals that you have. And when it comes to achieving your goals, how do you feel? If you remember and you think back to one of the times that you've finally achieved a goal that you had set to. How did you feel? I can imagine that you felt fantastic because I know I would and I know I have done. When I've achieved a goal that I've set my mind to, that I've put my mind to and I've been hard, I've done the work that needs to be done. Oh, I can tell you it is one of the most satisfying things ever. But whether you're trying to lose weight or whether you're trying to gain weight or gain muscle, it's important to set goals that are realistic. Now I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record here because I said this a few episodes back, but it's true. We tend to set unrealistic goals and then we get disappointed when we haven't met them. Girl, you're the one setting the goals. Listen to what you're saying to yourself. Look at the goals that you have. No one's saying you can't have big, amazing goals. Don't make your goals small. Absolutely make them huge. But if you're somebody who is not currently exercising, you sit at the screen every single day, your coffee is brought to you, you eat at your desk, you don't get up, you, you hold in your urine for as long as you can before going to the toilet because you think, no, I've got to be at my desk. I can't move because I'm going to miss a, a phone call. If you miss the call, they can call you back. If you miss an email, you can go back to the email and reply. The email is still going to be in your inbox. Now, I know I'm getting a little bit animated, but it's, I used to do this. I used to work myself in the ground for trying desperately to have any form of attention. Hello, can you see me? I'm here. Do you need my help? And the real problem was I was trying to run away from my fears. Mm. Now, when you're setting unrealistic goals, of I want to lose 100 pounds in 100 days. 90 days is fantastic to get started in losing your weight. Let me tell you, if you listen to 100, one episode 137, where I'm talking and doing live coaching. Now, it sounds a little bit like it might sound that I'm asking question after question. You have to understand that was a 90 minute episode and I trimmed it down to 30 minutes. So a lot of the conversation that we had isn't included in that episode. So it does come across like, oh, I'm asking question after question after question. However, there were lots of other things that we discussed that we didn't that didn't need to be shared on ear. So that was just to give you a synopsis as to how I coach and what it would look like working with me. Not 
not question after question after question. It's not an interview, but it's a coaching session to help you get to the answer. And if you hear it, then you will see how the, my client was able to draw to that answer for themselves. And that's what my coaching looks like. That's how I coach with clients. So it's not about getting you to set unrealistic goals and to be like, oh my gosh, how can I lose weight in the fastest days? 90 days, you are fantastic. You are going to do an amazing job. But what do you do on day 91? Do you have the confidence and the skills to do those things and continue setting goals that aren't weight loss related? And so how do you encourage yourself to keep going day 91, 2, 3, 4, 5? And day 95, if you happen to gain five pounds of water weight, how does that make you feel? So these are the things that you need to take into consideration when you are setting your goals. This is what realistic goal setting looks like. Now, you know this, if you're somebody who is a businesswoman, you know what it means to set goals, you know what it means to set targets, you know what it means financially and and business for you, businessly, relationally setting goals, setting a dream board or a vision board, setting goals or writing goals down or setting a goal or a personal best. There's so many different forms of goals, but they all have one thing in common is they need to be realistic. Now, there's that old acronym smart smat specific measurable achievable realistic time bound what time do you want to release do you want to achieve it in now if you're somebody who's got 100 pounds to lose fantastic you would be more suited for the six months coaching because you're going to have to do this thing and you're going to have to do it good you're realistically looking at yourself if six months if it happens for you in six months fantastic but you're not going to lose weight every single week so if you're looking at six to a year six months to a year at most at, at, at least sorry 12 months at least some it's longer than that it all depends on you and it all depends on you as a person and a body and how much you want to take and you can go listen to episode 137 and I I said to my client the same thing they were like no 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 12 months is too long compared to what compared to what you're already doing compared to the amount of times that you stop started stop started every single Monday Mm. if you hadn't have done that or you hadn't set unrealistic goals imagine where you would be with your goals now now this isn't to should have could this isn't a should have could have would have because you haven't it's don't worry about if you could have or you should have you didn't and you're here now that's not the point that's beside the point the point is imagine now imagine how that makes you feel take it on a board how that makes you feel like oh my gosh use that and then take some steps. Take some steps to sign up for the coaching. Do book in the session. These are 15 minute sessions. Do not, like I said in the last couple of episodes, don't take this episode. If you're not ready, don't book a session because you're blocking up somebody else who could book a session. All of those ways will be linked in the show notes below as to how you can book your 15 minute session. So when it comes to considering your goals, it's about making sure that they're realistic and sustainable. Also, you're not setting goals that are just weight loss related. Next one is to listen to your body. And when you're listening to your body, it's literally like you know that feeling when you're hungry but you're not really hungry like mm, I could do with some sweets or I, could, I, I, I want something I want something sweet that happens to me all of the time now it doesn't feel like the kind of hunger that makes you salivate at the thought of eating a burger like Chick-fil-a like or any burger but think of the foods that you love it's more like a subtle restlessness in your stomach that your stomach it's not too hard it's not too intense it's not uncomfortable but you know that it's there now these times it's important to listen to your body because what it is doing is telling you something and you need to determine whether or not it's telling you need food and if it does go on and eat you better go and eat now But if there is no real need and you're just bored, there's no growling, there's no rumbling, you definitely know it's not hunger, then don't go into the kitchen. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen for true. You don't need to be in the kitchen because your body is telling you what it needs and when it needs it. So it's important to listen to your body and stay tuned. The opposite is the same when it comes to, am I just eating because I'm bored? And you physically can feel that your body is full up, you don't need to eat more. These are things that you need to learn when it comes to listening to your body. The next one, the counting macros can help you keep track of what you eat without feeling like you're going on a diet. Hallelujah. Nobody needs to go on a diet, which means restricting yourself from food in order to lose weight unless you've been medically advised to do so. Now, when it comes to counting macros, it is macros. When when it comes to counting macros, it's all about calories, carbs. Give me the carbs, please. Healthy fats and proteins. These are the four main components of food that our bodies need in order to function effectively and to also function healthfully. Now, when we start to eat foods with the right amount of these these nutrition, of these nutrients, then we are less likely to overeat or binge on unhealthy foods because we're feeling so full up from eating the good stuff. And that, my friends, is what I do. I'm here to teach you about eating the good stuff. I'm not just here to teach you to eat a salad, okay? Because winter time is coming and there might be some of you that are like, oh, I've got my slipper socks on. I've got my pumpkin spice and those that don't like pumpkin spice, I've got you. Your normal coffee, your normal hot chocolate with or without marshmallows, your slipper socks, your comfy slippers, your sweater with a sweatshirt from yours truly. And then you are sitting and 
warm in your cockles with a nice bowl of chili. And Thanksgiving, you have got your pumpkin pie. You've got all of those good things. Now, those things are amazing. Now, if you're feeling like you're going to be restricted and you're not going to be able to do those diets, whew, I, I would feel you, I would feel you, I would feel you. And the thing is, you know those favorite foods, you know when you're just about to undo your butt and you're like, oh, man, that was really good. Can I go for more? But you know there's no room, but still you're trying to go for more. And when it comes to counting macros, this is one of the main things that it can help you to keep track of what you're eating without feeling like you need to go on a diet. So that's an important thing to remember. Now. I hope by listening to today's podcast that you feel more confident in your ability to count your macros. If you're looking for a way to eat better and healthier without feeling like you're on a diet, then my friends, macro tracking and focus on the fat loss might be the best fit for you. It's not an easy task. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not an easy task, but with practice, it definitely can be done. Remember, listening to your body, don't stress out about things too much, which is easier said than done at times, but I will be here to help you do that and to navigate that, whether we're doing this on a one-to-one. Either way, I'm going to be your wingwoman and I can't wait to get started with you. Hey friend, you made it to the end of the episode. What was your biggest takeaway from today's episode? Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review over on iTunes. And if you have any questions, comments or concerns about today's episode or you need help, then you can contact me over on Instagram at VA Nutrition Coaching Podcast or email me support at VA Nutrition Coaching UK. Or you can head over to the Facebook page VA Nutrition Coaching Podcast. It helps us reach even more women who are fed up of dieting don't know how to lose weight they're frustrated with following sally's results and they're not getting any of their own and they just finally want to shed some pounds and do it in a way that they can sustain and they can enjoy but my friends that's a wrap for today's episode i can't wait to catch you on the next one until then friends stay healthy stay blessed and remember if you haven't already downloaded your five ingredient recipe pack you can go to the website vanutritioncoaching.co.uk forward slash recipes and download your five ingredient recipe pack who said healthy eating was boring See you next time, friends.